Hero's pose can be wonderfully restorative if set up correctly in accordance with your body. So let's see how to set this up now and what we need. We'll start with three blocks, one blanket, and one big bolster. From the eighth fold, we'll fold the blanket again lengthwise, and the bolster should be large but thin. If it's too thick, it might be awkward to actually lean into the support. Starting with two blocks, we'll put one on the tallest height, and then the second one should just be about a couple inches away from the main block, either horizontally on the second height or lengthwise. Next, we'll take the bolster, but there's something to keep in mind. If you place the bolster on top of the blocks first, it'll feel very unstable. So instead, we'll start with the end of the bolster on the ground and then lay it over the middle and the top so that we have an even, stable base. Next, we'll take the third block on its first height and place it right next to the bolster. You want it to be horizontal rather than lengthwise so both sit bones fit on the block. Lastly, we'll take the blanket in that 16th fold and lay it right over the bottom of the bolster but we'll roll it first to give more of a support and a curvature for our lower spine. This will ensure that the lower back is nice and supported. From here, we'll turn around, placing a foot on either side of the structure and keeping the knees together. Now, to sit back, we wanna first place our head on the floor so that the calf muscles are on the slack and we can separate them, making space for the femur bones. If we have the head lifted, then they are engaged. So we wanna keep that head on the floor, separate them, and then sit back on the block. Now position the blanket to go underneath the lower back. Remove the flesh from underneath of the knees, and then steady yourself back on the support as you lift the hips slightly and tuck the tailbone and the buttocks flesh underneath of you, creating as much space as you can for the lower spine. Be mindful as you slowly work your way back that there's no injurious pain in the knees from too much pinching or the lower back is too compressed. You should feel adequate support underneath of you so you can truly rest into this pose and relax the head back onto the support. If you wish to add a shoulder stretch in this pose, you can reach back and grab the opposite elbows, allowing gravity to weight the arms toward the floor. If this feels too pinchy in the shoulders, you can release the grip and just hold at the wrists or the fingertips instead. Or keep it more restorative with the arms at the side and even more luxurious by putting an eye pillow in each hand to assist with grounding the body's energy. When you're ready to come out of the pose, release the eye pillows, put your hands on your heels or on the floor or support, tuck your chin, and use the strength of the arms and the abdominals to slowly return upwards. You might want to take a couple cat cows in the pelvis or little rotations to release any stuckness in the low back. And then coming onto your hands and knees, extending one leg back, a little rocking to bring more blood flow back into the feet. Now, depending on your flexibility, you may desire a deeper pose by not having as much support. So let's remove the blanket and block, and then we'll look at the blocks underneath of the support and we can lower them so that that first block will be on the first height and then the second block will be on the second height or even both on the lowest height. You can even remove the blocks altogether so that the bolster lays flat on the ground. And then we'll come onto the head, separate the calves, sit back between the feet and our hips will land right on the edge of the bolster. When we tuck the tailbone under, we'll feel a little support on the lowest part of our spine by the bolster. Removing the flesh from under the knees, setting yourself and laying straight back on your support, settling in, and then to open the back of the heart, give yourself a hug, separating those shoulder blades, and then open the arms out to rest at your sides. Now if the lower back doesn't feel supported, we can take that first block and turn it lengthwise. This way it hits the lower back a little lower than before. Try this out, you might like this much better. Another great variation is grabbing the blanket and rolling it up from the eighth fold, so it's like a rolled up bolster, and placing it lengthwise along that rectangular bolster. And this creates even more support all the way from the lower back to the head. 
for this variation, the hips are on the floor, and then we can drag that blanket as far low as we need to to feel supported before we lay back one vertebrae at a time. For those of you who love heart openers, this is delicious. So again, give ourselves a hug and then open the arms out to the side. Now, if the tops of the feet hurt when you're doing this pose, this variation's for you. We'll start with a blanket, open it up to the quarter fold, and we'll position it so there's a little extra slack near the bolster. We'll roll that up, creating a shelf, and when we position the feet, we'll place the ankles on that rolled up blanket. This way, it lifts up the ankle so that the top of the foot doesn't press into the ground. As you roll back, the weight will be evenly distributed from the knees all the way to the toes, rather than uncomfortably pressing into the tops of the feet. If the back of the neck feels crunched in this pose, We'll take a blanket from the eighth fold, fold it in half, and take the curved side of the fold by the neck underneath of the head. This way the head gets a little bit more elevated and might feel a lot more comfortable. Now if there's less flexibility or if there's knee sensitivity and the knee cannot bend all of the way, we'll add support. So we'll take a second rectangular bolster on top of the first, a little higher in positioning, and then we'll also add a block on top of that first block so that the hips can sit a little higher. This will increase the angle of the leg so it's not bending so deeply at the knee. Now we'll take a blanket rolling up from that eighth fold to create even more height on top of that second bolster. Now we'll see as we sit the hips on top of the two blocks, tuck the tailbone under, pull the flesh out from the knees, then we can maneuver the blanket and the second bolster to our comfort level so we feel nice and supported. As you roll back, resist the temptation to look over your shoulder, which will twist the torso. Instead, steady yourself with both hands and roll back one vertebrae at a time. It may feel nice and grounding to place the hands over the heels and just hold them. And when you're ready to come out, you'll slide the hands back a little further and tuck the chin to come up slowly. Great work.